Yeah, so the test vehicle is, um, it's basically a poor man's wind tunnel. It's a, a three component um, load cell mounted on the top of a, a, a truck um, and the glider suspended, you know, maybe 15 feet above the truck. And um, we can articulate the glider um, as we drive down the road and measure lift, drag, and pitching moment. So with a test vehicle, um, we're able to um, gather a lot of um, data and do a lot of testing that just isn't possible or would be very dangerous in flight. And, and most of it just wouldn't be possible because you can't fly a glider in a negative, you know, um, in a, you know, a negative angle of attack. You can't fly it backwards. You can't measure the stability co coefficients. You can't do all these load tests. Um, so our, our test vehicle is a way of exploring and documenting all these, these things. Um, and um, just as an aside, the test vehicle is, is probably, um, I would probably rate as the most significant development in um, tool in, in the history of hang gliding for, um, for design and development. We certainly, there's just no question, we'd never have the products we have today without the test vehicle. And, and we can credit that in large part to Tom Price. Um, a wind tunnel is just, uh, the, a wind tunnel that would be large enough to do what we need is just just way outside our resources and, and, and budget. Um, there's just no chance of, of buying time in a wind tunnel. We've never bought an hour in a wind tunnel. I don't know how much it is, but it's thousands and thousands of dollars for an hour. Probably an hour in a, in a wind tunnel big enough to make, you know, to put a hang glider in there is, is we can, the cost of our whole test truck you know, literally. So it's just, just an economic, um, you know, solution. Um, and and, and the, the test truck has been adopted by lots of other um, people in aerodynamics doing testing for wind surfers or small aircraft or whatever else. But um, the genesis of that, as far as I know, is Tom Price's first test truck, which he shared with all the other manufacturers. Usually by the time we get to the test vehicle, um, there usually aren't many surprises on the test vehicle. And I say usually because um, I've come to anticipate that when I least expect something, there's going to be an issue, you know. So it's like the surprise is never a surprise. It's like, of course, there would be something that went wrong. Um, so we got to the test vehicle. Um, when the test vehicle is finished, the glider's released. It's certified and released. We always complete the vehicle testing before we produce the first production gliders. Okay, so the test vehicle is one component of the certification process. So the, the testing we do on the test vehicle are the tests that are required to certify the glider. Um, so the airworthiness of the glider is defined or, or, or certified or measured by a set of parameters that measure um, um, structural integrity, the controllability, and the stability of the glider. So these are fundamental characteristics of an aircraft that make it airworthy or, you know, safe you know, have, you know, reasonably safe to fly. So um, the controllability, um, we test through in-flight testing and documentation. We fly the glider with cameras on board to document um, speed range, roll reversals, you know, takeoff and landing characteristics, you know, all the parameters from general flight and, and maybe a little outside those parameters. We turn to, we, we check, also check the longitudinal stability in flight showing um, the return to trim characteristics, the characteristics of the glider to have a, a stable behavior, you know, and, and other things. So the test vehicle allows us to test um, um, stability parameters that we can't easily do in, in flight and also to do structural component testing. So there's, there's three parts of the structural component testing. Um, um, there's positive tests. There's, and there's, um, well, there's, there's, there's positive tests and there's two negative tests that we have to pass. Um, and these are um, uh, tests that are designed to load the glider beyond the loads that would normally be experienced in flight. Um, so everything, everything that's designed or engineered for any application usually has a safety margin. So if you, have a, if you buy a ladder at Home Depot and it's rated for 200 pounds, um, 
it shouldn't break at 201 pounds. Um, you know, that just wouldn't work. And, and the safety margins in consumer products or products you buy, you know, at, at, you know, like a ladder or something, usually have very high safety margins, usually like five to one. So if you buy a, a carabiner for a hook for something and it's rated for, for 100 pounds, it's good, usually good for 500 pounds. In aircraft, those safety margins are necessarily much smaller because we don't have, we can't afford the weight in any kind of aircraft to have those safety margins. So in, in con hang glider airworthiness standards are follow the convention for conventional aircraft um, and that we have um, air speeds associated with safe operation of the aircraft. And there's a maximum amount of load that would be expected to be um, that the glider or the, the aircraft could um, experience associated with those air speeds. Um, and then we want to test with some safety margin above that. So in the case of hang gliders, we define um, two cardinal air speeds, VA maneuvering speed and VNE. These are the same kinds of air speeds you would have in an aircraft. The, the never exceed speed is a, is a speed that you should never exceed in flight. And the maneuvering speed is, a, is the maximum speed you should, um, you should operate the aircraft in, in any kind of conditions that aren't smooth. So, um, the airworthiness requirements and the structural test um, requirements require that you demonstrate 100% safety margin or 200% of the expected loads at, um, at the maneuvering speed of the aircraft and 150% of the loads or 50% more than the loads the glider or the aircraft might experience at, at the never exceed speed. So um, we, we perform these tests on, on the test vehicle and you know measure the loads and the air speeds and everything and document that and that's part of the airworthiness um, documentation and certification for the aircraft. All right, so, um... Yeah, um, well, this goes back a, a while um, with the 53 mile an hour VNE, um, and really it's it's more of a practical limitation than anything else. The problem is is that um, when we do these these tests on the test vehicle, the glider is um, it's um, it's it's very likely or possible that we can um, structurally fail the glider through no fault of the testing, but just because the glider is um, unstable when it's tethered on top of this boom at uh, a negative attitude. So that is, you're driving down the, the road um, in a test that um, is supposed to be what they call the negative 30 test. So the, the, the keel attitude is 30 degrees below the horizon. The glider is being loaded in this negative load. And, and initially, this test was supposed to replicate the loads that might be ex expected in flight if you have this, this, this negative loading. You get hit from a gust from above or whatever. In practice, um, gliders never fail in flight in the same failure modes that you would experience with this negative 30 test. However, um, the problem with this negative 30 test is the glider is, is very unstable in yaw in, this, in this, this test. So we're always worried that the glider is just going to twist sideways during this test. If there's a crosswind, if there's some turbulence or something on the testing procedure, the glider can swing out of the way sideways. And once it's sideways to the airflow, it's the loading's completely different from what it would be in flight because again this glider is tethered to a you know a 5,000 pound vehicle it's not the same as it's in flight so it's you know an approximation of the flight characteristics so anyway it can fail prematurely in the negative 30 test unfortunately the air speeds mandated for the negative 30 test um, and the other tests are coupled so in order to have a higher VNE we'd have to test at a higher negative 30 test now, in the case of a T2, um, the, the airspeed, well, the case, in the case of any glider that's certified to a 53 mile an hour VNE, um, the positive load test, which is a more applicable load test that, that does demonstrate the capacity of the glider to lift, you know, as it would be doing aerobatic maneuvers or any kinds of, you know, ex loads the glider would experience at high speeds, um, that is a very relevant test. And the, the airspeed associated with that test is 65 miles an hour. So in that test, we routinely test basically as fast as we can go on the test vehicle. It could be 70 miles. In the case of a T2, it's always at least 70 miles an hour, maybe 75 miles an hour. Pretty much we're limited to 75 miles an hour because we want to run out of horsepower and because 
at around 73, 74 miles an hour, the glider is lifting the truck off the road and you can't steer. And um, yeah, so we have nitrous oxide on the, on the truck so to power down the road, but once you lose steering, that's pretty much as fast as you can go. So we're limited to a test speed of say 75 miles an hour in the positive load test, but the VNE is still limited by the negative 30 test.